This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hey guys, I'm Eric Bonby from over on CommanderCast.com, and I'm here to finally talk about my much, much, much requested Prosh, Sky Raider of Carry EH deck. So here it is, a bunch of you uh, guys over on CommanderCast have been asking me to post this deck list, so I'm finally getting around to do it. Uh, that being said, I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet, uh, I'm not going to explain what every card does, so if you want to know what something does, just pause the video and read it. So uh, here it is, Prosh, Sky Raider of Care, he's my 6 mana Jun Dragon and he's an army in a can with a sack outlet attached. Uh, the goal of the deck is to kind of deal as much damage as possible in as short a time as possible. So it's kind of a shotgun thing, uh, you just take turns where you deal like 15, 20, even like 40 damage in a single turn, um, and it's really satisfying and awesome. The only thing to note about this guy is that this trigger right here is on cast, so uh, even if Prosh gets countered, you still get all of your kobolds, which is really nice. Yeah. So uh, here are the basic lands. I've got four of each basic. So here are my four swamps. And here are my four forests. And here are my four mountains. Uh, I think 12 is a pretty healthy number of basics to play in a three color deck. I don't know if I'd play too many less than that. Uh, I've got all three of the uh, dual lands. And all three of the shock lands, just boring mana base stuff. I've also got all nine of the fetch lands from Zendikar and Onslaught that I can play. Uh, only one I don't play is Tundra for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, I've got Ancient Tomb. Uh, it's banned on the French list for a reason, it's really good. Command Tower, uh, it's just the best multicolor land in uh, EDH, everyone knows that. And then I've got City of Brass, which is almost as good as Command Tower, and Mana Confluence from Journey into Nyx. They just printed this guy and I was very excited, it replaced my Reflecting Pool. Strip Mine and Wasteland, sometimes you need to blow up people's lands, this is a very efficient way to do that. I've got Urborg, just fixes me for black. Cavern of Souls. Uh, the only thing about Cavern of Souls that you should probably note is that I rarely name Dragon with it. Like I said, um, it doesn't really matter if Prosh gets countered, I still get my Kobolds. So uh, I will often use this to name another creature type that will synchronize with Prosh. Kessig Wolfron, this deck likes to deal a lot of damage at once, this is a good way to do that. Volrath Stronghold, you can get basically any ability on a creature these days, and the ability to recur that creature is awesome. Mana Crypt, it's just the best ramp spell in EDH. If someone tells you they're playing a casual deck and then they drop a Mana Crypt, you have my permission to call them a liar. Uh, Soul Ring, just everyone plays a Soul Ring. Birds of Paradise. Orcish Lumberjack, if you are playing Gruel Colors and you aren't playing an Orcish Lumberjack, go out and find one immediately. This guy turns your forests into black lotuses. It's nuts. Deathrite Shaman, if the card's good enough to be bought, banned in Modern, there's probably a uh, good reason to put it in my deck. Vampiric Tutor, go get things that I want, nothing special. Entomb, uh, this deck can do a lot of stuff from the graveyard. Uh, it's very easy for me to get stuff back or to manipulate my graveyard, so uh, this is an extremely handy card. Gamble, uh, this card has two uses. When my hand is full, it's a backup Demonic Tutor. When my hand is empty, it's a backup in Tomb. So this card is, uh, I think, highly underrated and should see more play. Worldly Tutor, just go grab a creature. Mind Twist, um, I play some Black Interruption, mostly Mind Twist and the card right beside it. Uh, Thought Seize, uh, these are my main discard spells just to catch my opponent and make sure that they don't have stuff that's going to make me cry. Faithless Looting, 
I think that digging through the top of your deck is very important in EDH, so a card that lets me do it twice while also manipulating my graveyard is awesome. Since he's divining top, just it's a top. Skull clamp. Uh, on the first pr uh, cast of Prosh, Skull Clamp nets me four or uh, twelve cards, which is uh, pretty insane for a one mana artifact. Uh, Life from the Loam, just insanely abusable in this deck. I can use it to get myself out of land screw. I can use it to just recur lands that have been blown up. I can use it to uh, use Wasteland and Strip Mine to lock someone out. With it's just good. Steve, just good ramp spell. Demonic Tutor, just good black card, nothing to see here. Vexing Shisher, I kind of have a infamous hatred of blue, so Vexing Shisher is a pet card for this deck. Uh, that being said, I've won a lot of games against Edric and Zur off of the back of this guy, so. Bitter Blossom, when I first made this deck, uh, I had a lot of cards that made tokens as backups for Prosh. Now I only have two cards that make tokens in the deck. One of them is Bitter Blossom. It's amazing. It comes down super early, and the tokens it generates are good enough to last me for the entire game. Abrupt Decay. Uh, you're going to find that a lot of the removal in this deck says destroy target permanent. And uh, being able to destroy permanents without being countered is awesome. So I run this card. Uh, I like wide selection of removal. When I'm playing a three color deck, the list has to be so tight that uh, you really don't have room for stuff that says only destroy creatures or only destroy artifacts or stuff like that. Sylvan Library. Um, it was either this card or Phyrexian Arena, and Sylvan Library is significantly better than Phyrexian Arena. So uh, that's why I run this guy. Knight's Whisper, again, just trying to draw through the top of my deck. Um, this card, the cheap mana cost is important because early in the game I can cast it to draw, and late in the game I can cast it to draw and then play the things that I draw. So, Bob, a uh, bit of a controversial choice in EDH. He could kill me, but he never has. He deals me uh, a little bit of damage, and then once or twice he'll deal me a lot of damage, and then I'll find a way to kill him. I've got a Sacrifice Outlet on the general, so I can make him go away, and the card advantage that early in the game is definitely worth it. Lightning Greaves. Prosh is good, and he's better with haste. Goblin Bombardment turns every single one of my uh, tokens into a little bullet that I can shoot stuff with, which is awesome. Um, it's just... A really good card. Lets me clear out blockers for Prosh. Lets me blow up, blow up planeswalkers. Just amazing all around. Blood Artist. I actually cut this card for a while because I thought that um, a card you're going to see a little bit later did its job better in terms of dealing damage. But uh, I actually had to put it back in because after I cut it I started losing games and I didn't know why. And then I realized that I had no life gain at all in the deck. And that I was losing games because I was getting smoked out without uh, any way to recover uh, from damage that either I had done to myself or that other people had done to me. So uh, that's, let that be a lesson to you on the importance of life gain in EDH. Earthcraft, uh, using those tokens to untap land is just another way to get value out of them. Uh, getting value out of those tokens is really kind of the heart of this deck and it's very important to uh, its end game strategy. Uh, I don't have any way of going infinite with Earthcraft. Um, most decks can, but mine can't. It's just a way to use the tokens to ramp. Uh, it's and it's good enough to include on that basis. Maelstrom Pulse. Like I said, I like destroying uh, permanents instead of select targets. Chaos Warp. Probably my favorite red EDH card ever printed. This card is just the bomb. I love it. Um, and they made a foil one for the. Um, Commander's Arsenal product, and I was very, very grateful for that. Beast Within. Again, I like destroying permanents, so uh, being able to blow up a creature, or a planeswalker, or a land, or a uh, or an artifact, or an enchantment, all of that's very relevant. Uh, I like being able to have options. Kodam is Reach and Cultivate. Nothing fancy, just good solid ramp spells. Uh, most green EDH deck play these. Sumberwald Sage, uh, one of the best ramp spells in the deck. I can cast Prosh the turn after I land this guy, which is awesome. And it's just, uh, 
easily one of the greatest ramp spells in the deck in terms of getting you three mana ahead and it only costs three, it's just nuts. So, Goblin Sharpshooter. Um, this is a card that I mentioned earlier when I said that there was a job that did it, or a card that did Blood Artist's job better. Um, I like Goblin Sharpshooter better because he can uh, hit Planeswalkers and he can clear out blockers. I have gotten a huge amount of uh, value out of this guy. I've wiped entire uh, boards of players out using uh, this guy and Prosh. He's just, he definitely, uh, he pulls his weight in this deck easily. And that art is just awesome. <laughs> Food Chain, uh, I think it's kind of infamous. Right now, that uh, Prosh can go infinite with Food Chain, so that's why it's in there, so I have the option to go infinite when I want to. Um, for those of you who don't know how it works, because Prosh makes two more tokens every time you cast him, and you can actually exile Prosh to help uh, pay for himself, uh, every time you um, exile your tokens to make mana to make Prosh again, um, you end up netting four tokens because of the eight mana that you get for, or the uh, seven mana that you get for exiling Prosh. Um, so you just do that again, you net four tokens on a hundred recasts, end up with infinite tokens, and you can do all sorts of silly shit from there. Uh, Beastmaster Ascension, obviously great card. Uh, in Prosh it lets you swing for 40, which makes it the best of all of my pump spells. Um, it, it's really good. It's better than the one behind it, Shared Animosity. Both of them let my tokens swing for big damage, but the thing is is that Shared Animosity will only pump up my uh, tokens. Beastmaster Ascension also pumps up Prosh. So Beastmaster Ascension lets me swing for 40, Shared Animosity lets me swing for 35. Uh, 35 is usually enough to kill most people anyway, just because of incidental uh, damage in the game, but still, it's... Uh, Shared Animosity is just a slightly less good uh, Beastmaster Ascension in the deck. Fecundity, it's like Skull Clamp, but I don't have to pay mana and I get one less card, which is a fair trade-off. Uh, when your general is a sack outlet, you can probably abuse Fecundity more than anyone else at the table. Uh, this card has definitely won me games. Eternal Witness, just recursion in green, it's good. Read the Bones. I talked about the importance of digging through your deck. Being able to dig four cards deep is pretty important. Toxic Deluge. Uh, just wipe an entire field out early in the game. Against certain decks, uh, Elf Tribal, Edric, uh, even stuff like Rafik, sometimes you really want to Wrath early, and uh, this card accomplishes that for me. It's one of the two Wraths in the deck. The other one is Damnation. Because sometimes you just need to blow up the board, and uh, this guy does that. Here we get to another big chunk of ramp spells. I've got Explosive Veg, Ranger's Path, Hunting Wilds, and, uh, oh, there it is. Sky Shroud Claim was in that stack. So uh, I've got four of the uh, get two lands into the battlefield, uh, four cost ramp spells. All of the ones, except for Explosive Vegetation, right over here, get me Forests, which will let me go get my Dual Lands, or Basic Forests, or my Shock Lands. Uh, explosive Veg just grabs Basics, which can be preferable in certain circumstances. So I run all of them. Uh, Oracle of Moldiah, it's Ramp, and it fixes my draws. It's kind of pure card advantage for me, so I, uh, I really like this card. Garrick Wildspeaker does double duty in this deck. He is a ramp spell in terms of untapping those two lands. He's also a win condition because after I untap the lands, I can use that overrun effect, give all my tokens plus three plus three, and also give uh, Prosh plus three plus three and trample. Let's you swing for, if I remember correctly, it's 18 damage on the tokens and uh, 8 damage on Prosh, which means I'm swinging for about 26 damage, and it's all trampling. So he can be a huge, huge win for me. I, uh, I love this guy. He's probably one of the best cards in the deck, just because of the fact that he does both jobs. Perforos, another one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, when you first cast Prosh, you're going to be dealing 14 damage to every player uh, who isn't you. So keep in mind, that's 14 damage to each opponent. 
Then afterwards, you can untap, pump twice. You're swinging for a total of 19 damage if you pump all your creatures twice, and uh, you just have Prosh and his Kobolds. This guy does huge work in this deck. Um, definitely a good tutor target. Ogre Battle Driver, I tried cutting him, and then I ended up putting him back in, giving my Prosh haste, giving all those tokens haste, swinging for that 19 damage, it's just, it's too good an effect. Anger, I sometimes don't like this in EDH decks, just because uh, most decks don't have a reliable way to kill their own stuff, but when your general is a sacrifice outlet, you don't really have that excuse, so I really wanted to run Anger, and it's done a lot of work in this deck, I can... Uh, I can use it as an Entomb target, I can pitch it to Faithless Looting. When I ran Survival of the Fittest, I would often Survival of the Fittest it into the graveyard, but uh, I cut Survival of the Fittest because this deck didn't really have enough creatures to make use of that card. So if you're wondering where Survival of the Fittest was earlier, that's why it's not in here. Disciple of Bullis, uh, draw cards and gain life. It was a contest between this card, Greater Good, and the three ma or the five mana green Garrick in terms of drawing cards for a creature's massive power, and this card ended up winning out because it also gained me life, and because it's a creature it's easier for me to tutor for and recur. Speaking of recursion, Dread Return. This card is amazing in this deck. Let's me uh, reanimate something if I cast it. I can also cast Prosh and sacrifice three of the tokens he makes to flash it back. Just a stunning card in this deck. Uh, easily the only um, reanimation spell I run, and easily the best one I could be running. Vraska the Unseen, again, I like blowing up uh, permanents. I have won off of her ultimate before, I have uh, ultimated her, but that is the exception, not the rule. Uh, mostly she's just there as a Vindicate effect that I can use more than once. Acidic Slime, I had no removal on creatures, I realized I needed it, so that's why this card is in the deck. So this is uh, Xenagos, God of Revels, he's... Uh He's really good in this deck, but he's probably going to be replaced as soon as they print something better, just because I have to actually sacrifice all of my tokens to get the full value out of him. But for what he does, he's really good, and that is that he uh, causes Prosh to have haste and swing for double damage. Uh, double 11 damage, 22, he turns Prosh into a one-hit kill. Um, so he's kind of an all-in kind of card, which I like. Uh, I'm actually thinking about building a deck just around this guy. But he is, uh, in, in this deck he's still good, but he'll eventually be replaced by something that requires a little bit less risk, I think. Fury Stoke Giant, on the other hand, will never be replaced. This guy, um, comes down, causes all of my tokens to tap for 2 damage a pop at whatever I like, and then afterwards, on the next turn, I go ahead and I sacrifice him to Prosh's effect, get that Persist trigger to go off, and uh, I get to do it all again. I get 24 damage out of a 1-5 mana creature investment. He clears the way for Prasha swinging for general damage. He uh, he can just do 24 damage to the dome. Wipe planeswalkers in the board. Uh, this is one of the best cards in the deck easily. I get huge amounts of value out of him. <coughs> Another card I get huge value out of. Sadistic Hypnotist. Uh, this guy is my second mind twist. He is, um, he gives me the ability to make 12 cards get discarded from opponent's hands. So he's really awesome in this deck. He, uh, it's, it's very rare that any opponent is left with cards left in hand after I resolve this guy. Um, it's one of those things where my opponents answer it or they're, they're in top deck mode for the rest of the game. Colonian Hydra. Um, I think it's important to run backup effects for your general in your deck. So in this deck it was important to back up two things. I needed to imitate Prosh's ability to build a, make a bunch of tokens at once, and there's a card you'll see later that does that, and I needed to imitate his ability to swing for massive amounts of damage. So uh, this card emulates emulates the uh, massive amounts of damage. Colonian Hydra, the first time it attacks, it's 8 trampling damage. The next time it's 16, and then the next time after that it's 32 trampling damage. This guy uh, is a 3 hit kill all on his own. He is just amazing. I think I got him when he was like 30 bucks. He's gone down since then, but it was worth every penny. 
This guy is uh, just, he's a house. And if people don't answer him, he just starts wiping out players wholesale. Tooth and nail, I'll just no explanation necessary. Green card, green decks play it because it's an instant win or it's good. Uh, in this deck, it isn't an instant win, but it can deal over uh, about 30 damage to the whole board. Oh, oh, usually between 20 and 30 damage to the whole board um, by getting Perforos and a uh, card you're going to see behind it. So it's not really, uh, it, it's it's not an infinite combo, but it almost might as well be in this deck. Um, it can also get me just utility that I need at the time. Uh, it's it's tooth and nail. It's very strong. Karn Liberated. I was talking about how I like permanent destruction earlier. Uh, Karn, Liberate, Karn Liberated is some pretty good permanent destruction. Uh, Jund really doesn't have access to exiling removal, so this guy does that. And he's just all around good, solid planeswalker. And last card, Avenger of Zendikar. This is my backup to Prosh making a million tokens. So, uh, yeah, he's comes on the battlefield. He's the only card I know of that uh, is a creature that can also imitate Prosh's ability to make that many tokens. So, um, that's why I run him. He, I can pump up the tokens with just his ability, or I can pump him up with any of the things that uh, go with Prosh. Just get a lot of work out of that guy. So yeah, that's my Prosh deck. Um, it's not unbeatable, but it wins like 80% of the games that I play with it. It's a really, really solid deck. Uh, it does huge amounts of damage all at once, and it's very, very consistent. So if you want a deck that's able to do stuff like 30 damage to every player at the table in a single turn out of nowhere, then uh, maybe this is the kind of thing you'd like. Thanks for watching CMDR decks, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and favorite.